looking for some good books to read? Here are a few of my favorite science nonfiction books. I haven't read anything but papers and textbooks for a while, so they aren't new books, but they are books that I've read that have really stuck with me over the years. So here's a bit more about each one. The book that has really stuck with me the most is The Philadelphia Chromosome, A Mutant Gene, and The Quest to Cure Cancer at the Genetic Level. It's written by Jessica Wapner and published in 2013, and it tells the story of the development of Gleevec, which is a drug that's used to treat various cancers, including chronic myeloid leukemia, or CML. And how it works is it basically inhibits this rogue kinase. Um, and so this rogue kinase comes about, this protein that's kind of overactive, it comes about because parts of it and parts of another protein got merged together when these chromosomes kind of like swap position and merged. And this chromosomal merging in this weird way, it produced this weird looking chromosome that was able to be detected with methods before we had the molecular methods to actually identify the genes. They could see that something was going on with this chromosome. And so this weird chromosome was was discovered in Philadelphia and that, that's the name of the book. Um, but it, the consequences, it forms this mutant kinase. And the kinase, it adds phosphate groups, which are kind of, so it's kind of like serving as a signaling molecule. And when you have this rogue form, it's sending a lot of this signal telling these cells to grow and divide. And so this is then going to cause cancer. And Gleevec works by inhibiting that rogue kinase. And the development of it, it was really, really fascinating. And so it kind of highlights the work of Brian Drucker, who had to really press for press for this companies to invest in this treatment and things like this. It was kind of a new concept for cancer treatment, a sort of molecularly targeted treatment as opposed to just like broad chemotherapy, which tries to kill the cancer cells, uh, but does so by just killing all cells. And because there's more cancer cells dividing, I mean, they, because the cancer cells are dividing so rapidly, um, they're going to have be more impacted by those general chemotherapeutics, but so are your normal cells. And so by targeting molecules more specifically, the hope is that then you could have less off-target effects and you can use, um, really target the cause of the cancer. Unfortunately, people develop mutations. Um, so there's actually like second generation and even like third generation, I think, versions of Gleevec, but it's actually been quite a game changer for a number of cancers. And so this book tells a story of its development and it's really, really interesting. Another book that's really, really interesting is For the Love of Enzymes, a very different kind of book, but it's still a science book. This one was by Arthur Kornberg, um, published in 1989. And if the name sounds familiar, he won the Nobel Prize for discovering DNA polymerase. And this book was actually given to me by Dr. Alexandra Newton, president of the IUBMB, and um, because it's one of her favorite books, and I can definitely tell why. It's a really great book. It's the firsthand account of pioneering enzymology. So basically, going from thinking about proteins as kind of these blobs to thinking of them as these intricate machines. And it takes this like historical perspective as well as kind of chronicling his work over over decades just that led up to that discovery of DNA polymerase and then after some things with that as well. It shows how science progresses and like fits and starts in over years. So although he, yes, he won the Nobel Prize, it took a lot of work, a lot of um hurdles and things like this that he had to overcome in his research, some of which um, he did with the help of like his wife, Sylvie Kornberg, who was, I have a post on her, but yeah, so that's how I learned about her. There's some really interesting things in this book, some stories. They also show various um, chemical mechanisms, but in a simple way. So you don't have to know a bunch of chemistry to be able to appreciate it. Um, it's really, really interesting. And it goes through some classic enzymology experiments and purifications and things all of this work being done to purify this DNA um, copier out of cells without having the like tags and things that we use this day to make these days to make things really interesting. So really interesting book. Or, I'm sorry, to make things really easy. So a really interesting book. Going back to like drug discovery, The Billion Dollar Molecule, One Company's Quest for the Perfect Drug by Barry Worth, published in 1995. Um, so this book was actually, give, a copy of it was given to me 
by my graduate, um, graduate school advisors whose lab I was in, so Dr. Limor Joshua Tor. She lent me her copy early in grad school, and I really loved it. It tells the story of early research by the pharmaceutical company Vertex to develop drugs to treat cystic fibrosis and other diseases. And so this was at the er in the early days of Vertex. Um, and it, so it kind of gives some insight into startups, at least in, um, in 1995. And of more interest to me and of my um, professor of Limor, why, which is why she lent it to me, was because it goes into how they use like structural biology and rational design to design these drugs. So basically getting a look at what the binding of the protein looks like. They actually use a bunch of NMR in this, um, in this project, in this book. Um, but really looking at kind of like the binding site and how can we rationally make the molecule fit better and things like this, rather than just doing a bunch of screens and trying to find something that just randomly happens to work. Madness in Memory, the Discovery of Prions, um, a New Biological Principle of Disease by Sandy Persner in 2014. This tells the story of how he discovered prions, um, which are basically these misfolded proteins that can then serve as templates to make other proteins misfold. And this can allow like a protein to actually be infectious. And so this was this really groundbreaking concept really contentious at the time, um, still um, debated even after like he won the Nobel Prize. Um, but this book tells of his discovery of it. So we're talking about, about prions. Um, these are things like mad cow, the cause of mad cow disease, um, as well as there's other like non-infectious prions as well. Um, and so this is basically the story of the discovery and it's really interesting. Another book that's really good. Um, this one's a little, a little, um, harder in terms of emotionally harder, not scientifically. Um, but Mapping Fate, a Memoir of Family Risk in Genetic Research by Alex Wexler in 1995. I actually did some research on Huntington's disease in undergrad one summer. I did a um, research experience in Steve Finkbeiner's lab at the Gladstone Institute in UCSF um, with a grant from the Huntington's Disease Society of America. And um, this basically, this book tells a story of this family that was affected, that's affected by Huntington's disease, which is this terrible neurodegenerative disease. And it's dominant, um, autosomal dominant. So basically, if your parent has it, you have a 50-50 chance of, of carrying that gene and developing this Huntington's disease, which is um, going to be fatal. And so basically, there's this family and the mother had Huntington's disease. And then her, she had two daughters and her daughters didn't know if they had this gene or not. Um, so Nancy and Alice are the daughters. Um, Nancy was, she studied um, like, she became a geneticist um, and she and their father, Milton, actually worked to develop like this Huntington's disease foundation to research the research, fund research into Huntington's disease and worked a lot on the Huntington's disease research. And Alice was a, became a historian, and she writes this book telling their the story of their family and of how they were grappling with the consequences um, and the implications of potentially carrying this gene. But it also goes into the research that they were helping that they were that was going on to find the cause of Huntington's disease, which turns out to be this expanded region of the DNA, um, where it kind of makes there's this repeated letter, one of the amino acids in this protein Huntington, it gets inserted a lot of times. And so you get this mutant protein that causes all sorts of problems. And so they were, the family was deeply involved in finding the genetic cause for the disease and then funding research that would actually help potentially develop cures. And so it tells the story of kind of like early research into Huntington's disease, as well as really personal, um, a personal account at how heartbreaking this disease is. So this is a really affecting book, um, as well as having that great science. It's a very, um, very thought provoking and gives you a better appreciation for the people behind the diseases that we talk about. So Huntington's disease is often used as kind of like this model to talk about various things like repeat expansions and like autosomal dominant genes but there's really people behind that. And I actually went to a HGSA conference and met some of these people 
Um, and they really are some great people doing work on this um, and great and families that are really severely affected by this disease um, and are incredibly strong people. So I just wanted to say that. Um, so word of caution when reading this is it is very affecting, um, but it is a good book, very good book. Okay, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. This was written by Rebecca Skloot in 2010. Um, this is another one of those emotionally challenging books. Um, this one tells the epically infuriating story of the woman that HeLa cells come from. So if you know HeLa cells, there's this like immortalized cell line that we use in biology a lot um, to do research in because they can, they're immortal. They grow over and over and over. They can keep, keep dividing. And that's good if it happens in a dish, but it's bad if it happens in a body. And so this woman, Henrietta Lacks, had this tumor that these cells were taken from and these in the body they were causing this cancer because they were dividing lots of times. Um, so basically they took these cells from her without, without like informed consent or anything like this as part of when they were um, doing treatment on her. And then this, these cell lines became this powerful tool. And the, they never, the, the worst part is that like the doctors and stuff never told the family. Um, and they contacted the family to get information from them and various things, but they lied to the family about their actual intent. Um, and so there's all this ethically infuriating things. And so I really recommend that you read this book, um, if, especially if you use HeLa cells in the lab. Emperor of All Maladies, a biography of cancer by Siddhartha Mukherjee in 2010, um, as well as the accompanying PBS Ken Burns documentary. These are really good. It gives like a historical through the present look at cancer biology and treatment. Um, so I really recommend this, as well as a later book from um, Mukherjee and uh, another Ken Burns documentary from PBS, The Gene and Intimate History, which gives it's a similar type of setup um, in terms of giving this kind of like historical to present look um, includes some of the people involved in the research as well as the research itself. But this time it's on molecular biology. So of this kind of like the dawn of molecular biology and the progress. Um, so how sequencing the genome using CRISPR and all these tools to edit the genome and various things like this. So those are just a few of my favorite books and there's a lot more. Um, there's also some updated books of some of these. So like the Billion Dollar Molecule, um, Barry Worth wrote an update or a, a later book called The Antidote. I haven't actually read it, um, but I really like this original book. So I should probably read it if I have time, some, time somewhere. Um, so yeah, so hope that you enjoy these books as well and happy reading.